there, my name's Alex and today I'm going to show you how to make your own iron-on patch using crochet. The things you'll need for this project are embroidery floss or cotton in the colours of your choice, a crochet hook and I recommend a 1.5 to a 2.25 millimetre hook, a pair of scissors, a needle, parchment paper, some heat and bond ultra hold and an iron. If you'd like to make a rainbow patch, simply follow my 12 row rainbow tutorial and using the embroidery floss with a smaller hook. Now because your patch is going to be made of crochet, you can make it any size or shape you like. I've made a little tag here to go onto the edge of a beanie. A circular patch there for my smiley face. But today I'm going to be making a pride flag patch. This one I've made before which is two and a half inches by one and a half inches or 64 by 38 millimeters ends up being 20 stitches across in single crochet. So I'll be using this as my guide for the patch I'll be making today which is the transgender flag. So I've got my colors and I'm going to start with the color that's at the base of my flag. Create a slip knot, put it onto your crochet hook and now what you want to do is chain the amount of stitches it takes to get the width of your patch or your flag. So just keep chain stitching until you get to that width that you're happy with. And then chain one more stitch. Now we're going to single crochet this patch and we're going to single crochet into the very second chain from our hook. So by inserting your hook into the top of that chain, yarn over and pull it through the stitch, yarn over and pull it through the two loops on your hook. That's creating your very first single crochet in the row. So hook under that next chain stitch. We're going to repeat that. Hook through the chain, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over through those two loops on your hook. Now you want a single crochet all the way along the length of your chains. And if you're new to crocheting and you're unsure about how to create these stitches, how to create a slip knot, how to create the chains. I have tutorials on my channel for every one of these stitches and very easy to follow and I'll leave a link to those tutorials in the description. And make sure that you're going to single crochet into that very last chain. It's a little bit tricky on that first row. If you miss it, your patch or your flag will end up being a little bit angled and skew at the sides. You don't want that to happen. So then we chain one stitch and turn our crochet work to the left. And that completes our very first row. So we're going to single crochet into that first stitch. So again, just showing that up close so that you can see where it is. My, my floss not behaving. <laughs> so under those top two loops there, that of that last single crochet stitch that we created, but the first in this new row. Hook through, yarn over, through, yarn over, through the two loops on the hook. Now you're going to single crochet into every stitch along this row, just as we had before. And you'll repeat this process until you have as many rows in that particular color that you're working with. Now for me, I think it's going to be three rows, but we'll see. Again, make sure you don't miss that very last stitch. That's looking quite good. Okay. 
and then you'll chain one and turn your work to the left and single crochet along not forgetting to go into that very first stitch and right along that row because my flag is made up of five different colors my rows will only be quite narrow so three will do it for me and then we'll change color when you get to the end of the color that you're working on and it's time to change color you want to trim your floss to a generous length and grab your new color also leaving a generous length in the tail place the new color over your hook with the tail down to one side and pull it through the last loop that you have on your hook and pull gently on those tails just to tighten it up a little bit chain one in the new color turn your work to the left now we're going to be working over our yarn tails just so we don't have to sew in so many uh, lengths of, of tail at the end of our project. And this first row or the first color change you do will be the trickiest for you, but persevere with it because it is going to save you a lot of time at the end of the project. So again, we're going to single crochet right across that length, but holding those tails uh, above your hook so that when you create your single crochet, you're going to catch both of those tails and they're going to be hidden into your work. So just checking on the back all the time to make sure that you've actually caught both of those yarn tails into the back or the floss tails. And single crochet right along the length of your patch. Again, just checking, especially with that first row, you just want to check that you've caught both of those tails in. And at the end of that row, you want to chain one, turn your work to the left, and repeat. So we're going to single crochet all the way along. Now our yarn tails are already tucked in nice and neatly. What I like to do is just work just a few stitches along of this second row of the colour change. And then we can trim our tails. So the two tails that are hidden, give them a snip. And keep going with your single crochet along the length of your patch. Now you're going to repeat these steps until you have created the entire flag patch or whatever motif you're actually making because you can follow just about any crochet motive pattern or tutorial to make your own patch. Using the color change method and hiding those extra tails so you're going to reduce how much work there is at the end. So at the very end of a flag patch you should only have two tails to sew in. That'll be your starting tail and your finishing tail. Enjoying this video so far? I hope you are. If you are please hit that like button and consider subscribing for some more really fun craft content. And when you've completed the very last row of your patch, you want to trim a tail that's going to be long enough to sew in. Go to create a chain stitch, but pull your tail all the way through that last loop. And that will secure your crochet work. That's looking good. Now you'll probably notice by looking at your patch, if you've created a flag patch like this, one side of your patch is going to look better than the other. So choose which one you prefer. Then what we're going to do is sew our tails into the reverse side of that patch. Thread each of the tails onto your needle and just weave them in and out of the reverse side of the patch. You don't have to be too neat with this because we're going to be adding that to a garment so you won't see those tails. And now on to making it into an actual iron-on patch. You'll need your parchment paper or non-stick baking paper. 
some heat and bond ultra hold and an iron now you set your iron to a medium setting about wall heat and you turn the steam setting off cut a big enough piece of heat and bond to more than cover your patches place your patch or patches onto the heat and bond now the heat and bond actually has like a gluey surface that's the side you want to add it to you want to then add some parchment paper or your grease proof baking paper to the top and then carefully flip everything upside down so you can iron onto the back surface of the heat and bond now what's going to happen here is that the patch will adhere to the heat and bond and any excess glue around that edge will be caught by the parchment paper. So when your patch is cool, you want to peel off the backing. Now I'm making this look super awkward because I'm using one hand while I'm filming. <laughs> um, but you want to remove all the excess glue from around the edge of your patch. Then the way you can just tidy that up and get it right close to your crochet work is just to be very careful. Press the patch onto the iron, just very gently and very carefully, don't burn yourself. And that will just heat away that excess glue. Now I find this is a much neater and easier way than trying to cut your heat and bond to the exact size of your patch. And it will actually mold to the very shape of whatever it is that you have crocheted. And after I've done that, I just wipe the iron over with a couple of tissues to make sure that I remove any glue residue. Now to iron your patch onto whatever it is that you want to add it to, make sure that the fabric is clean and it's already flat, so it's a nice, easy surface to add it to. Position the patch, put some parchment paper over the top of it and iron carefully, pressing down firmly. Now you may need to increase the heat of your iron a little bit, but just take your time with it because you don't want to burn the patch and you don't want to burn your garment. It might take a few goes just to get it right. Just checking. That seems to be adhered. Now while the glue is still hot, you will be able to peel it up. So just let that cool a little bit and just check that it is adhered properly. Then iron on the reverse side just to make sure that that heat has really gone through to the glue and let your patch cool down and that patch will not be going anywhere it'll be permanent fun and inexpensive i hope you have enjoyed making a patch for watching please show your support by hitting that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for instant access to fun and creative project tutorials I'd love you to join me thanks again be safe be positive and as always stay awesome <laughs>